Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Do you know that now you can drag and drop images from Keep Notes to the Gmail app in a split screen view? This is just one of the 24 new features in Google Apps that I'm going to share with you in this episode. So let's find out what's new. Let's start with Gcam. We recently got version 8.5 on Pixel devices, but don't get too excited about the picture quality because I see it exactly the same. But there are a couple of new features worth mentioning. The first change is the new leveling dot that appears while taking night side photos to help you keep the phone steady. To avoid taking blurry photos in night side, just make sure this dot stays in the center until the phone finishes. Change number two. If you use Gcam on Pixel devices, you definitely came across the leveling tool that helps you to perfectly align the camera. Previously, every time you reach the zero degree mark, the phone gives you a haptic feedback, but after version 8.5, it only happens for the first time throughout the camera session. Next, Google Photos. And with the latest update, we got new check boxes next to each date for easier multi-selection. And on top of this, you will see a floating card at the bottom of the screen with all the options we used to have at the top right corner. And when you expand this card, you will see even more. Like the recent contacts carousel to quickly share your photos with them, the ability to add the selected photos to your currently created albums, in addition to the location map. And finally, you will see a redesigned multi-selection counter at the top left corner that has a pill-shaped design. And keep in mind, the new multi-select check boxes will also appear in each and every device folder. Next, YouTube. And now there is a new playback gesture called the Precise Seeking. If you take a look here, when I tap and hold on the seek bar, I'm getting a text at the top saying pull up for precise seeking. And when I do the action, I'm getting a much bigger seek bar. It will show you a thumbnail for each moment in the video, in addition to the chapter names. To jump to a specific spot, you can either tap on it or use the swipe gesture. To dismiss the seek bar and continue playing, you can tap the play button at the bottom left corner or you can simply swipe it down like this. And as you see, the seek bar is now permanently showing on the screen and if you want to dismiss it, you can tap the screen twice. The same feature works in portrait mode as well and in this case, you will see an extra X over here to dismiss it. And finally, the same gesture also works on desktop. Now let's talk about YouTube Music. The Mixed For You section in the home page got a new More button. Tapping on it will show you all the mixes in one page in a grid view. The second change is the ability to multi-select songs on the web. All you need to do is to hover your mouse on any of the items and you will see a checkbox next to it. Click on it and select all the songs you want. Then a floating menu will appear with three options. The ability to add songs to playlist, play next, and finally add to queue. Change number three is the new radios influenced by multiple artists. So let's take hip hop radio downbeat as an example. Here you will find tons of artists to listen to and the songs are grouped together based on the genre. This change is only available on the web for now, but it will make its way to mobile phones in the future. Next, keep notes. And it got a really exciting feature, which is the ability to drag and drop images from keep notes to Gmail in the split screen view. So here I have a new email and here's the image in Keep Notes. All I need to do is to hold the image. And as you see, the drop target is available over here in the Gmail app. All I need to do is to make sure the drop target turns into blue. And once I release my finger, the image will be in the email. And that's also the case with the drawings. Next, Gboard. And now Assistant Voice Typing supports spelling out words. So let me show you this. H-U-S-S-I-E-N. Stop. Next, Google Chrome on Android. Now when you tap on the Manage Windows option, you will see the available windows in full screen view instead of the floating card like before. And when you tap on any of them, it will open in a split screen view automatically. Change number two is the ability to turn off Discover Feed from your Chrome home page by tapping on the gear icon and then choose Turn Off and you can turn it back on using the same steps. Next, Google Chrome on iOS got a redesigned overflow menu when you tap the three dots at the bottom right corner. It will show you the most important options at the very top in a horizontal carousel. After that, you will see Reload, New Tap, New Incognito Tap, and when you expand it to a full screen view, you will get even more options. And finally, Chrome on desktop. Now when you go to settings and then privacy and security, you will see a new banner at the top called the privacy guide. 
It's a wizard that will take you through some steps to review your privacy settings and choose the options that suit your needs. When you click on Get Started, it will first explain what's the privacy guide, and when you click on Next, it will start with the search and the browsing quality settings. It has a toggle to turn the feature on or off, and a clear explanation on how this feature will impact your experience and the privacy. Page number two is for the history sync settings. The third one is for the safe browsing protection to choose between standard or enhanced. And lastly, the third party cookie preferences page will allow you to choose between blocking third party cookie in incognito tabs only or block them everywhere. And that was a quick look on Chrome's privacy guide. Next, Google app. And it got three new changes. The first one is the smaller quick phrases bubble that appears when you get a phone call. The second change is the new follow button that appears next to the movie reviews in the discover feed. And finally, the use save the password overlay card that shows at the bottom of the screen when you try to sign in for any website now looks slightly different. Next, Google search. And now when you search for flights online, you will see a lot of new useful information that we never had before. And the first one is the COVID-19 trends in the destination country. The second card will show you a price indicator to let you know if it's within the normal range or either higher or lower than expected. And when you expand this card, you will see the price history for this flight within the past 60 days. And when you scroll down even further, you will see a button called dates, which will show you all the prices for this flight in different days. In addition to the price graph. Here you can also change the dates to see which one has the cheapest price. You can also access the price graph directly from here, but what I like the most is the ability to track prices. I can either track the prices for these specific dates or any dates for this destination. Either way, you will get email updates when the prices change, which is a very convenient feature. The second change I noticed when I search for some questions, I get a carousel at the top with different options related to my search query, and when I tap on any of them, the search will be modified to give me more specific results. And lastly, Google search will now show you the air quality index in US, India, and Australia. Next, Gmail. And now when you tap on your profile picture in the app, you will be able to see the amount of storage used in your Google account. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are the 24 new features I wanted to share with you. Please let me know in the comments if you spotted any new feature in Google Apps to include in my future episodes. But for now, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.